Oh, okay. Uh, I've been trying to make this video for about uh, two weeks now, over two weeks. And uh, it just deals with the benefits of meditation. I, um, uh, God, ten years ago now, it was the first time I actually read the Buddhist scriptures, which is the only book that I found that's actually uh, good that you can find in a bookstore. Although I don't know if you can find it anymore. I actually had to go online and get a copy that I don't have right now. So found it online. It talks about the benefits of meditation. And uh, in the West, when we hear meditation, we think of these odd things. And in, in what the West, that's what meditation is. There's a lot of, uh, well, I don't want to go into that so much because we eat up the time. But in uh, the way I was taught in Zen was sitting, focusing on breath, and just allowing things. You know, the fact that the thought may rise, just let it rise and fall. You know, just let things kind of, you're just kind of the observer. Good example is that somebody sit, standing on a bank and watching the river go by, and they're not interacting with it, they're just observing it. Just kind of how the Buddhist view life, the books at Hartha had uh, something, some imagery like that in it. And it says, uh, there are in fact 28 advantages to be gained from secluded meditation, and there are the reasons why the Thagathas have devoted themselves to it, and they are as follows. The Thagatha is um, another title for Buddha. Uh, a lot of times he's called Shakyamuni. I like calling him Gautama the Shakyas. It's awesome. And then there's uh, Gautama Siddhartha or Siddhartha Gautama. Kind of depends on who you run into and what translation. I don't speak or read Sanskrit, so I don't know. They are as follows. Lengthens his life, gives him strength, shuts out faults, it removes ill fame, it leads to good repute, it dries out discontent, it makes for contentment, it removes fear, it gives confidence, it removes sloth, generates vigor, removes greed, hate, and delusion, slays pride, it breaks up preoccupations, it makes thought one-pointed, softens the mind, generates gladness, makes one venerable, gives rise to much profit, makes one worthy of homage, brings exuberant joy, causes delight, shows the own being of the own being of all conditioned life or all, of all conditioned things, abolishes rebirth in the world of becoming and it bestows the benefits of an ascetic life. These are the twenty eight advantages of meditation when induced the Thagadas to practice. Yeah, some of that wording was very strange in there. Uh, so I even repeated that one part of it. Like, what is this? Now there are certain things uh softens the mind. <laughs> yeah, I think that's when you we say someone's soft minded, I don't think it means that. It probably got another meaning to it. It's kinda like uh reading older books, it's almost like reading the Bible. You kinda you read it and go, wait a minute, it doesn't sound right. And then you look into depth more and when in fact it does actually talk about something different. The cycle of death and rebirth, uh, it's kind of funny. In the West, people were always kind of scared of death. And, well, in the modern West, and assumed death was, you know, kind of, uh, in, and then uh, there'd be an afterlife, you know. So it was kind of like, we're well, going here into the afterlife. In India, which is where the Buddha lived, the first Buddha, yeah, he wasn't Chinese, but I know most of you know that. Uh, the the ancient Hindus, the ancient ancient Hindus, actually did have a um, form of monotheism with an afterlife. But what happened is, as time went on, there was this these cycles of death and rebirth that you would come, you know, you would get born, die, born, die, born, and keep going and keep going. And they said, enough of that. We want, you know, I guess what can be described as nirvana or oblivion or total emptiness, cutting off, wanting to get to an e eternal death. It just seems very odd to us in the West. Now this has changed of what people think it is. Oh no, maybe it's this blissful, non-physical paradise, or it's this. But the way it pretty much started, which uh, 
Theravada Buddhism, also called Hinayana Buddhism, preserved is this idea of boom, oblivion. And even their idea of karma isn't that the soul goes on, it's just your actions wind up sparking other things that go on. Uh, <clears throat> so the goal was to escape all this. It wasn't to, the idea of even, you know, whether you were in deepest hell or in the highest heaven when you were reincarnated, it still was bad because you still have, you're still burning up karma whether it was good or bad. And that's why karma in Buddhism became a much more dirty word, whereas in uh, in Hinduism you can have good, they talk about good and bad karma. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. It's a great thing to do. Uh, there's a video where somebody, you know what, uh, I'll find, well, that'll be remain to me seen. Sorry, it's kind of a bit, bit of gibberish at the end. Uh, peace to you. I hope you find benefits in meditation. Or just sitting and observing, as it's sometimes called, or sitting.